I lost my son at the age of 29 three years ago, December 23rd. One of the people I work with every day um, lost their son of a fentanyl overdose here in Kensington. I have friends here today who've also lost children from uh, fentanyl overdoses. I lost my daughter to fentanyl. I have uh, multiple loved ones who have passed um, due to the opiate crisis. One who literally was linked to Big Pharma and being overprescribed um, prescription drugs. My best friend, she passed away about two years ago. He uh, hurt his leg. He had actually a metal rod put in his leg from a trip and fall on some ice. And they put him on Percocets. And that's where it started. It was just downhill from there. And then they were, when they, his prescription ran out, he was able to get the pills on the street. And then when they stopped the pills on the street, the next step is heroin. And then, then it turned into fentanyl. Now it's the trank that's going into the drugs. My name is James Whitehead. I'm from Kensington. Grew up in Frankfurt, which runs adjacent to this neighborhood. I also have a sibling that's uh, suffering from drug abuse as well. Also, the reason why people were coming out is because there are nonprofits that are funding governments to basically enable addicts to constantly abuse drugs. My name's Sam Oropesa. Um, I'm here because I'm here every day. I work literally three blocks from here um, at Venango and Ruth Street. We, we want to see people get into effective treatment. We want drugs off of our streets and we want action taken. Yeah, I'm here today just to tell the stories. Like I said, tell the stories of the people who lost their loved ones and also to touch on the elected officials that I heard. It was a bill that Cindy Bass, council member Cindy Bass wanted to put out uh, as far as to, you know, regulate, uh, you know, the opioid crisis as far as the pills and all that. A couple of those elected officials voted against the bill and they are allegedly running for mayor. Why did they deny the bill? Why did they vote against the bill? And why are they allowed to get donations and, you know, get funds from this company that is now being sued for being part of the opioid epidemic. So I'm Tatiana Vela. Um, I am here to bring awareness to the opioid crisis and to just bring attention to um, the policies and things like that with dealing with Big Pharma and what it has caused um, the destruction in our community, um, as well as the organizations that are here that are doing the exact same thing. So instead of them, you know, helping these people get off of drugs, find them housing, find them resources to get off of drugs, they're enabling them, and um, they're part of the problem. They're actually a huge part of the problem. Um, there's organizations here that are dispersing bags full of 12 needles, crack pipes, cotton balls. And there's an issue that when people get stuck by the needles for hospitals to find the emergency um, preventatives for them not to contract HIV, which is another issue that's never talked about. Hey, my name is Pastor Carla from CDA Philadelphia, and the reason why we're here today, or why I'm here today, is actually is because I see the need of what's happening right now in Kenton Allegheny. Or, or ministry, we'd be out here every other Thursday and, and some Saturdays, and we have seen the need of of people uh, involved in in, in, in in this drugs, like kids 13, 14, 15 year, years old, and it's extremely, extremely sad. Um, Kensington Allegheny uh, needs help. Me growing up in Frankfurt, I remember moving here in 98, but if you go to Frankfurt right now as we speak, the YMCA is no longer there. The Powell is no longer there. The Ray and Joan Crack Community Center is no longer there. A supermarket at Bridge and Pratt is no longer there. So my thing I tell you is, if no resources are in, in being invested into the community, what is going to happen? I'm from Lancras Community. Uh, I, my job is to help people to come to work to register. What my hope is try to get people to understand the American political system. I think it should be literally a priority for anyone running for office to walk these streets and see exactly what's going on. You know, this isn't a, a forgotten area of Philadelphia because every politician in the city knows exactly what's going on here. It's an ignored area of the city. You know, everyone just wants to ignore it and pray it doesn't go away and hope people don't bring it up. So I think new politicians, want to be politicians like myself, need to come here as much as humanly possible and put it on, on, on the front page of the newspaper every day because people should not have to live with this like this. The neighborhood should not have to live, li live like this. Those under the cycle of addiction shouldn't have to live like this. We need to get those people help and we need to get them off the street so this community can go back to the great community it once was. To be honest, you know, when I speak to the people sometimes, I speak to them and, you know, a lot of them, they want help, but they don't really want help. You know what I mean? They don't want to go into a rehab center. They don't want to go into a detox facility and all that. They would rather just stay out here and get high, you know? And, and unfortunately, a lot of them stay out here until they die. Instead of 
in investing in safe injection sites and um, needle exchange programs. I'm instead going to focus on opening up inpatient treatment facility centers that's geared to working with people that are suffering from mental health, uh, drug abuse, and behavior health. Because when you think about the root stem and why people turn to drugs, it's because they witnessed something traumatic in their life. Well, it's important for this to happen now because we got little kids that are growing up and if this is what they emulate uh, and see is okay to do this, then who, who are we to tell them that they can't do it? The result of this is actually find out if the government can do something about it. It's not just covering the issue, but resolving the issue. Because I believe there's a solution. I, I, I believe that there's, 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 a, there's an end to this. Um, and the city needs to step up, not, not just cover it, but resolve the issue of uh, uh, making plans, making, bringing things into the light, into, into assistance of what's going on with the city of Philadelphia. Mr. Kim, he is the Cambodian community activist in Philadelphia. He has helped uh, people to register to vote. He will help try to do whatever he can do for the community. And not only the people that live in Kensington are affected by this, but people from different areas of the city are also impacted by the uh, devastation that's going on down here. A lot of the addicts that come here aren't from Philadelphia. They're from the county, they're from the west coast, they're from the south, they're, uh, they're not from here. Which means you're getting enlightenment from the drug, basically through media. Getting people off of drugs, that's the key, but you need the accessibility to them is ridiculous. You could walk anywhere around here and get drugs instantly, and nothing's being done about that. Some people don't want help, but for the people who do want help, I believe that the city, the state, the country, whoever, need to put the funds together, put the people together, and you know, really help the people out because it's sad down here. This is this is a man-made problem. We're not. This isn't here because of geographical locations or the way the sun sets. Um, this is a man-made problem, and you know, we allow this to come into our city to kill working-age men and women. Um, the highest number of working-age men and women killed every year is from fentanyl. Um, this is narco warfare. This is a this is a huge cycle for Kensington because there's going to be all the city council, all the city council, large people are should come here. The city council should people should come here. The ten district people, the mayor should come here. Anybody who wants to run for office, we got to put on the front page because everyone needs to commit to Kensington who's running for office today. I just hope it'll bring awareness to the right people that can actually make change and that um, people that are um, in charge of funding. Um, can actually send funding to organizations that are actually helping people get off of drugs and out of the street instead of enabling them and keeping the cycle going. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single footstep, so I think today is our single footstep right now.